Marxallee is still one of the most imposing streets in Berlin. Monumental buildings, tiled facades, two kilometers of neoclassical architecture on the Soviet model. Tour guide Matthias Rau explains the history of a boulevard that was once a showpiece in East Germany. Right now we're standing on Germany's first communist street. East Germany wanted to show that workers were the most important people under communism and that only the best was good enough for them. The so-called wedding cake style workers' palaces were elaborately restored after the Berlin Wall fell. At 90 meters, the avenue is wider than the Champs-Élysées in Paris, but these days, with some 60,000 vehicles speeding through it, it's more a busy thoroughfare than anything else. It's not an inviting boulevard. It's monumental architecture, nothing that really invites you to stroll along it. Then there's all this traffic. And even with the businesses here, it still lacks sophistication. Art galleries, publishing houses and architecture firms are now moving here, taking advantage of the impressive glass shop fronts. The gallery Wagner and Partner has moved into the premises of Interflug, the former East German airline. I always found this street very interesting, an architectural monument, though slightly empty. But that too has its attractions. And as a contemporary gallery, we always look for surroundings that have something to do with our own themes, which is also exciting and maybe a bit rough. Rough is. For several years, more and more young people have been moving to Karl Marx Allee, which used to be called Stalin Allee. The beginning of construction was accompanied by an unprecedented propaganda campaign. The street was designed as part of a national rebuilding program. And here are two propaganda posters from the time. Here it says, everyone, help build the German capital anew. Many citizens volunteered after they'd finished work. Enthusiasm was tremendous. But in 1953, the East German regime raised work quotas across the country without increasing pay. The construction workers on Stalin Alley went on strike and many people joined them. The mass protests led to the popular uprising of June the 17th, which was ultimately quashed with the aid of the Soviet army. For me, this is one of the biggest symbols here, although it's unintentional. The fact that the uprising began here, of all places. The discrepancy between ideology and reality was enormous. But Karl Marx Allee doesn't have just one face. It's somehow a majestic view, this street, which now belongs to a bygone system. I have to say, I think this street's quite hideous. But it has to stay. It's valuable as a symbol of an historical time that must not be forgotten. It's evening on Karl Marx Allee. In communist days, this used to be a beauty parlor. Now it houses Bar Babette, a pub and art space. Gallery owner Kai Wagner wishes there were more such places on Karl Marx Allee. Then, um, if there were plenty of interesting shops, to increase the time people spent here, Karl Marx Allee would certainly become a new place to stroll. At the present, it's more a place where people go with a specific aim, if they're interested in art, culture, design or architecture. 25 years after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the city's largest architectural monument, Karl Marx Allee, is still changing.